Okay, so part three of the story is about something called REDS, R-E-D-S, which again, I hadn't heard of until I read this article. It stands for Relative Energy Deficiency Syndrome. And it's common among athletes but no one knows the extent of it I'll explain what it is in more detail in a moment uh, no one knows the extent of it but according to the article somewhere between about 12 and 75% of women may be affected by it by some degree to another and somewhere between 15 and 70% of men Now what is it? Well it is a situation where a person does not have enough energy to be able to do the things they're asking their body to do. Now, you now when you go to the supermarket or some takeaway food places and cafes, they have a sign somewhere that tells you the average daily intake is 8,700 8,700 kilojoules kilojoule by the way is about 4 calories so that makes it something like 2,100 and a bit calories now people every day by getting around just doing stuff that you do each day that's considered to be what you need to maintain a healthy body now obviously it's going to vary a little bit by age by body size and then if you are involved in vigorous activities like running for example then that figure is going to be different and so in the case of Alyssa Duncan <coughs> she was put on this restricted food intake uh, and as a consequence not only was she not getting enough food in terms of quantity you're not getting enough food in terms of quality in other words and I'm again not a dietitian or a nutritionist but as a, I guess you would call her an elite runner she needs foods that translate into or you know that she digests and break down into the chemicals that provide her with the energy to be able to run and she putting enough of those things in her body for her body to be able to convert to those to fuel for her to do what she wanted to do he was quoting the article as saying that uh, 
before she became aware that she had this situation and had this problem, she would have a banana and a cup of coffee before she went out to run. Now, again, bearing in mind I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that, if she, whatever meals that she had taken in before that, the night before, if they were not of sufficient quality, then the banana and the caffeine heated the coffee was only going to get her so far before <coughs> the needle in the fuel tank started hovering on the empty and the orange light inside her body was coming on saying low fuel, low fuel, low fuel. Somebody who's running videos I watched for a while, his name I can't remember, but he was certainly putting himself forward as if he was somebody who was qualified to offer coaching advice and he knew what he was talking about. He said once that if you're going to eat, you've got to eat and be finished eating two and a half to two hours before the run you're going to do. So Realistic purposes, if you're going down to Goldwyn Park Run starts at 8 o'clock, that means you've got to be finished eating at the very latest by about 6. That's because, according to this fellow, it takes that amount of time for the body. Not only to digest that system, uh, food, and you're not carrying this enormous uh, I'm not saying you had a huge breakfast, but it's like you know, you're not carrying a big lump of food you've just eaten in your stomach that is digested and passing its way through your digestive system. But not only that, uh, the food has become the energy source that you need or running. So clearly a cup of coffee and a banana just as you're going out the door not going to help. Now again I've never I have only ever entered one official running event and that was last year I ran with my son and daughter-in-law in the bridge to Brisbane 10k and whilst I didn't consciously plan it I'm sure my son who uh, did the cooking the night before made a meal that would provide us with the fuel load we needed to do the run. I used to work with a guy who used to do the City to Surf every year and he'd go to Sydney the night before, walk himself into a hotel, meet a bunch of other runners from Goldwyn and they'd all do the carbo load thing. So this relative energy deficiency thing means that you've got to make sure that you consume enough food in terms of quantity but also quality so that your body 
how is the fuel in the tank to be able to do whatever it is you were planning to do as a runner the dietitians and nutritionists and so forth will give you advice about that and there are all sorts of people on YouTube who develop training programs for distance running, 10k, half marathon, marathon and so on. Some of their training programs are free, some of them you pay for. I can't uh, comment on the quality or usefulness of any of it because I don't know anything about that. What I would say to you is if you are thinking of increasing or starting running and you've not done it before then see your doctor even if you feel perfectly fit and healthy see your doctor tell them what you're going to do and listen to their advice if you uh, You know, a Saturday morning park runner and you decided you want to step up to the next level use a cliche whatever that next level is again consult your doctor see what they advise you and consult people who are qualified to tell you about eating and so forth. Now coming back to this reds thing, uh, it is said that He said that women are more adversely affected by it than men. And that is for a couple of reasons. First of all, the article and the number of people that the journalist consulted say that women are supposed to act differently around food than men and by that they are saying well it's considered good for a bloke to have a healthy appetite and enjoy a big meal whereas a woman is not supposed to do that that's not based on any science or nutrition or anything. It's just apparently how we see men and women. And it's to do with uh, social expectation rather than any science or nutritional information or whatever. Uh, the second reason is something to do with again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know how well I've explained how I'm going to explain this bit, but something to do with the dietary requirements of women and maintaining a healthy reproductive system. And as in the case of Melissa Duncan, when she was doing all this hard training and not getting enough food, 
her reproductive system suffered. Uh, because her body isn't getting enough food, it starts to eat itself. And so bone density is lost, muscle mass is lost. Uh, people start to get injured and those injuries take longer to heal. Uh, and there's a general fatigue and listlessness that the person feels because they just don't have enough energy to do what they're asking their body to do. Yeah. I think I've pretty well told you everything I know about it. Uh, I don't have any lessons to teach you or to point out because I would have thought first of all that were obvious from what I've said but uh, if they're not then the clear message is consult a doctor if you are feeling any of those sorts of symptoms, tiredness, irritability, lassitude, lack of energy, fatigue, and, uh, if you're a runner because maybe that you just aren't getting enough food. So consult a doctor if you feel you have any of those things. If you're considering taking up running, no matter what your state, age, or what you think your state of health fitness is, consult a doctor. If you're thinking of increasing your training because you want to step up to another distance or something, Again, consult a doctor. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Goulburn while I've been telling you about these things. I was just under five and a half k's in from where I started from. And uh, I won't film the rest of the run because I've said what I wanted to say. So thanks for watching. I'll uh, talk to you again when I'm making the next video, whenever that will be.